Daniel, thank you so much for, you for uh, talking me. to Smooth today. So, um, tell me all about your new role because it's quite a role. We never quite know what to expect from you next. Escape from Pretoria. Tell oh, me, Tim Jenkin. Great, yeah, absolutely. So, um, Escape from Pretoria is the true story of three South African political prisoners who were imprisoned for uh, being a part of the fight against apartheid, um, and they were they were imprisoned, and they kind of. Tim, Tim Jenkin, the character I play, uh, who is also obviously a, a real person, was just a bit of a genius. Well, and referred just... to as the White Mandela in the movie. I mean, in I the saw. movie, yeah, yeah, yeah. But in the movie by by a, by a policeman who is trying to take... Tim would obviously never have said that of himself. And there were guys in there that he... Um, he who were like fathers of the movement, and and obviously there's there's not there were not a ton of white people in the ANC, but there were some. Um, but Tim Jenkin eventually, like, look, he... We actually have to tell a lie in the film and make it seem more complicated than it was because we were just like, no one will believe the reality, which is that... That's um, often the case. Yeah, because we in the film we show he, he, he... Basically, they escaped by making keys. They made keys to all the doors in the prison. And the way they were able to design the keys originally, um, in the film we have Tim, like, make a mould and draw the shape and draw the outline like that. In reality, Tim just looked at the keys on the guard's belt and looked at them for hours and then went back to his cell and just drew them by eye from memory and then was able to build the, the things around that. I mean, yeah. You're they, right, nobody would believe that. You're right, nobody would believe it. And also, like, I mean, I, I, can, I could always just think about, like, what was the moment when the other guys in prison who wanted to escape realised that they had this absolute genius who was offering them away like they were so lucky to be in prison with tim jenkin like everyone <laughs> Don't know was. If they saw it that way probably but... not ultimately but you know it's just an incredible this is um, the guy that's going to get you out ultimately you know, that's the guy you want to know and he's still apparently like um a couple of his neighbours where he lives in South Africa. Oh, no, I don't know if he lives there anymore. A couple of his neighbours where he lives will occasionally get, like, locked out of their house and oh, will just, like, have, have asked him in the past to just, like, get them in. He's a handy <laughs> man like, to know. Very handy. Um, tell me, what was it like to have him actually on the set, watching over every move? It was it was quite intimidating having the real... Must be reassuring as well, though. It was reassuring. Though. I mean, it was reassuring at a couple of moments because he, <laughs> he would say that was exactly like it was when we did right. it. And any time he said that, it was like, oh, my, look, we have, we've done it, guys, we're fine. Um, but the rest of the time, like, Tim's a very reserved guy. Yeah. So it's like you look at him most of the time and you're like, are you enjoying this? Do you think what we're doing is good? It's very hard to tell. Um, but so he, It's not like having your mum watch, she thinks everything's wonderful. No, exactly. <laughs> you know, it's very different. Yeah, it's my mum's just, like, endlessly supportive. Um, <laughs> but Tim Tim was, like, a little more reticent. And, and also, you know, I can only imagine it must be a, a crazy thing to do to walk onto a set where people are reenacting scenes from your life and dressed as you and you know it just must be such a weird thing that um uh, yeah and he also he has a cameo in the film which meant that on his like first day on set he we were filming in a real jail and they put him in a prison uniform again and put him in a cell Ooh. and you're like okay is he up for that? I mean, he was very up for it. He found it all really funny, I think. But, um, he knows how but, to get out, so he'll be okay. Yeah, exactly. But so yeah, it's a you, mad You played thing. him. Who would play you? Who played me in a film? Oh, I have to say Elijah Wood. I'm oh, contractually wow. obliged to say Elijah Wood. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Um, I mean, that's the thing. We're, he, he's he's older than me. and I'm. But uh, yeah, we get we get mistaken for each other a lot. And people think I was in Lord of the Rings a lot. And people, I think, think he was in Potter quite a bit. So, I mean... Just for one second, I have to tell you, I got mistaken, yes, for J-Lo, and I didn't have the heart. This is in Texas, after a Fantastic. very long night, and I, and I actually signed the autograph as J-Lo. Right, yeah. Have you ever signed, well, I didn't want to disappoint, have you ever signed as Elijah Wood? I have, only, um, but I did, but I wrote, no, well, was I it a of, check? I've signed a photo of, yeah, um, I've signed a photo of Elijah Wood, but I signed it. I am not Elijah Wood, Daniel Radcliffe, because I was Double just like, because it was because he because it was in Japan and he just thrust this photo. It was at a premiere, and I was like, you don't have the English and I don't have the Japanese to communicate to you that this is not me. Actually, so I'm going to write it down and I'm going to hope that somebody translates it for you later, so that you don't just think I. Yeah, I told you. I think, uh, why was Elijah Wood being so evasive? Why was it, yeah. <laughs> I could, never, I could just go around... I know, I could just go around... 
ruining Elijah Wood's reputation <laughs> and just like doing terrible things and then claiming that and screaming, I am Elijah Wood he as I leave. He could also do the, the same thing. He could. This could be the start of a, a sort of arms race between me and him. <laughs> uh, I've got to ask you about the accent because it is a yeah. tough accent for yeah. the male, isn't it? Yes. The South African accent. Yes, it's a weird one. How did you find it? I mean, I found it okay. There's some, it's like many accents, like some words are weirdly easy and fall quite naturally. And like then, what? Um, I'm not going to do the accent now, but like one, there yeah. was a there was a phrase. Um, uh, there's an uh, an a parked car with two armed guards in it, 200 yards down the road, was one of the lines I had to say, and it was a really useful sentence because it features it a lot of the, the vowels that are different. Um, so that was one. Uh, but yeah, but there's also like a bunch of words that trip you up and are weird and. Yeah, it's it, it's definitely a tricky accent. It was also we were doing it in Australia, so we were filmed it in Australia. So that you're doing a South African accent, then hearing a lot of Australian accents, and yeah, it was it was tricky. So you didn't go the full Daniel Day and say nobody else speak to me. I have to stay. No. I have to stay no, in no, South no. Africa. I I wouldn't I wouldn't cope. I'd just be I'd be completely insane, and it probably wouldn't work anyway. <laughs> so yeah. We've talked about all these roles that you play because no one ever knows what to expect next. It's so diverse and it must yeah. be so wonderful for you as an actor. Right. But what has uh, come along recently is a lot of musical biopics. So we've had Elton. Yes. We've had Freddie Mercury. Yeah. I mean, we're, we're, you know, I might smooth here. Who would you like from the 80s or the 90s? Who would be your go-to guy? Or who oh, would you like man. to see Elijah play? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I don't even know. I really, that's well, I'm going very for Boy hard. George. I'm going for George Michael here. Any of those float your boat? Boy George? That's an interesting life as well. So is George Michael's, I'm sure. Yeah, I'm not, I don't think I'm good enough singer to play either of those. But yes, I I, 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 would, I would love to do some sort of music biopic. That would be great fun. I would love to find some excuse to sing on film. That would be awesome. Right, that's it. That's as there good go. as sold as, as right. far as I'm concerned. Come on, anyone listening, <laughs> write those scripts. And again, with Smooth in Mind, uh, you know, who's your guilty pleasure? Do you have an 80s or a 90s artist that you think, I, I need to get through this script, it's an all-nighter, only going to be Shaka Khan that can help <laughs> with this? I don't know. I have all my tastes like alternative and indie and... I know, you say stuff. that, but everyone's got a guilty pleasure. I know, but I don't think I believe in guilty pleasures. If you like it, you like it. Um, Elton, back out there, the Beatles. El I mean, okay. uh, Wait, the Beatles are a guilty pleasure? Well, they're not alternative, so... Would they, but without them, alternative wouldn't exist. I true? mean... You I could mean, play a Beatle. Wait, Which Beatle would you play? Be you could play all four. I mean... Yeah, really, actually, with, if I grow that my Potter one hair, I really could. Um, all right, no, if we're going like... What did you just call it? My Potter one, like, first Potter film, well, that's how we refer to them. So you have to keep your Potter one hair? My Potter one hair, if I, like, grew it, like, in the first Potter film, when my hair was just, like, little mini John Lennon, I could, yeah. <laughs> um, but no, I, uh, I, if it was going to be, if, if we're saying that the Beatles are a guilty pleasure, then 100% the, Ge the Beatles I will play all night. That's... Can't be a guilty pleasure. Who listens to them guiltily? Okay, I'm trying to help you with some more. Um, oh. uh, I was going to say you too, but that's not very guilty no. as well. I mean, that would be guilty for me. Oh, would it? A little bit. <laughs> a bit of Bono is a little yeah, bit. It's a little, a little bit stadium-y. A little bit, ah, I don't know. I you don't, don't like the popularist. Like. Oh, it's not even that. I do like some really popular stuff. I'm just like, I like what I like. Oh, this is the worst answer to any question anyone's ever given. We um, like to be a bit alternative in our questions, so... Okay, if I can... Look, look at this as a bit is of Dolly a... Is Dolly Parton a guilty pleasure? Oh, you, she's the queen. Right, okay. She is the queen. So, like, all of the Dolly Parton. Uh, name a song, because she has actually recorded... Hard Candy Christmas. Which song? Hard Candy Christmas. That came very quickly to you, Daniel. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you said name a song. That's the one. <laughs> I didn't need to think that much. She re-recorded a bit of Jolene as Mylene for me, and I had it as my ringtone for quite a long that time. That is outrageously cool. I know. I mean, so there you go. So Dolly Parton cool. is your go-to. Yeah. Okay, we Sweet. like that. Right. You're very, very, very busy. So you're, <laughs> uh, at the moment, you're promoting your movie. Yes. You're also back at the old Vic. Yeah, doing a play um, called Endgame, which, which is... Which had amazing reviews, by the way. Thank you very much. Yes, no, no, we did, we, we did all right. They're, they're, um, it's, it's a really, like, beautiful, odd, funny, incredibly dark play. Can't emphasize the darkness enough. Don't want to feel people and baiting them into coming and seeing something, and then they're like, whoa, these people hate each other. Um, because it's very much about that. But it's, uh, yeah, it is, it's a fun, weird evening at the theatre. And if you, you know, if you want to watch Alan Cumming be amazing and me fall off ladders, 
then it's great. Sounds like a perfect night out. Yeah. And also, you're on Sky Comedy as well. Yes, um, indeed. It, it's, um, this is a, a, a show called Miracle Workers, which the second series has just come out in the US. Um, but the first series is uh, on Sky Comedy here. Uh, it's very funny. My very quick pitch for the series is that Steve Buscemi plays God. Um, and so he should. I mean... After Dolly. After, yeah. Oh, actually... She did an amazing casting. Um, somebody needs to make a film with God and cast Dolly Parton. Um, but, uh, yeah, so it's a, it's a wonderful uh, series based on a book that I loved by a writer that I, I loved. He's just incredibly funny. Um, and it's, like, very sweet as well. Uh, a lot of the other stuff I do is, like, very, very dark um, and weird. There is a, a weirdness to Miracle Workers, but at its heart, it's, like... It's a lovely story about two angels trying to make two human beings fall in love. Like it's a really sweet story. Um, it just happens to be done in a very funny, weird way. Well, you say that all these weird characters that you play, but you play such a, a range of characters. So other than you playing the Beatles or not you two, not Dolly, <laughs> possibly Boy George, possibly Boy George, be up for that. Where yeah. where do you see yourself going next? Or are we just not allowed to know? Or is it just it could just be anywhere? It could just be anywhere. I mean, I don't know yet. Um, I've got a, there's a couple. Of, Maybe a number one on the Harry Potter one. I've done I've done that already. I did I played did a film where I played a, a guy infiltrating a neo Nazi thing. So I had to do skinhead for that. Loved that. It must Loved. have felt liberating. Oh, it's pretty, I did it on camera as well. So much fun. And just like and people just people just touch you all the time. It's lovely. Um, just coming and, up, and no, just just come up and have a bit of a feel. Saying Elijah, I like what you've done here. <laughs> Elijah, is this for a part? Um, and uh, yeah, but I, I, I so I've got a film coming out uh, soon as well this year called Guns Akimbo, which is crazy. And then I'm I did a thing for Netflix. I'm in the the Kimmy Schmidt um, end of series movie that they've made. Um, you are very very busy. How yeah. do you? I mean, I know that you're a bit of a wordsmith. I'm not going to make you rap because I. I no. Yes, yes, you are. My children have learnt the periodic table. But I didn't you write rapped. that. I didn't. That was my idol, Tom Lehrer. But, That's, but I'm so glad I got your kids to, to the listen to it. Front. And maybe sorry to you if you're having it played. No, we love it. We loop. love it. Um, I, I've I've learnt a few more elements than yeah, I ever just, ever knew about. Annoyingly, there's even more since that song was made. So there's just too many to try and remember now. Um, but Molly Bedenham. Who knew about Molly Bedenham? I know. Yes. In, yes. Very highbrow this interview. <laughs> Molly Denim. Did you think that we'd be discussing that? I really today? didn't. Um but um what was I gonna say? How do you remember all your words? How do you do it? Oh yeah, I mean that I just I do think I've trained that part of my brain really well, so I'm just good at remembering lines now. I'm useless memory for like birthdays of loved ones or you know other stuff like important keys. life stuff keys you phone know, you know tim jenkins but, you're but fine. I, I know tim jenkins and i know my all my lines for the show tonight but that's what's weird as well as i will I, i'll forget this entire play the day after i stop doing it it's really weird how quickly stuff leaves your head 